It also requires them to participate in a one cent per hundred gallon surcharge that we all pay on our water, and it goes to a very good cause. It goes to protecting the watershed around the reservoir or the well that is the source of water for the supplier. And the Water Resources Board works with the suppliers uh, in terms of drought and managing, um, managing when there's not sufficient rainfall. The Department of Environmental Management generally pays attention to the stream flow and to the water level in ponds and wetlands to assure that the wildlife of the state have sufficient habitat and all that that supports. Um, our abundant forests, which come as a result of our rainfall, provide lots of oxygen, provide lots of uh, screening for air particles so that we have cleaner air. So all of that is the Department of Environmental Management. But the Department of Environmental Management also sits on the Water Resources Board, as does the Department of Health. And the Department of Health's role is to assure that drinking water is safe and meets the water quality standards that will keep us all healthy. And the Audubon Society is involved with all those things too, sits on the boards and partners and whatever? No, we don't sit on the boards. Uh, those are mostly government agencies okay. and, and uh, the officials, but we attend the meetings and we take the opportunity to comment when there are regulations or proposals. And it's a part of the government process that we're all able to participate in as mm -hmm. citizens, but as an organization that represents many citizens, um, we do focus on fresh water. Well, there was an, an article in the paper, uh, this is being taped on uh, April, no, I'm sorry, May Day, today's May Day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Happy May Day, everybody. This is being taped on May 1st, but yesterday in a the paper there was an article, Rhode Island overuses its water supply in the summer, a new report has found, and the report uh, was released by a special house commission to study water issues. Yes. <clears throat> Last year, the, both the House of Rhode Island and the Senate held hearings bringing in water suppliers and the agencies that I just mentioned to talk about concerns for water, for economic development, as well as having enough water in the streams. This report, as did the House, the, both the House and the Senate report, showed that water use doubles or sometimes triples in the mm. summertime. So of course, we have the summer coming up right now, so we want to be aware of that and we want to know what we can do to conserve right. water. And, and the question is, do we want to sacrifice development for having green lawns? But there are ways that we can have both. And, what's that and that way, we think, is for people to pay more attention to how their lawns are irrigated. If okay, you let's talk about that. Now, you've okay. got a can here. Yes. This is a handy-dandy water gauge that you can create with a tuna can or a cat food can. And if you put it out on your grass, a combination of rainfall and your lawn sprinkler should fill this. This is about an inch. Okay. And one inch of water is all that your healthy lawn needs to... Um, You've got it marked one inch, so... Uh, oh, yes. There we go. Okay. So, and one inch is all that your grass needs to remain healthy. The University of Rhode Island says... For that a if, week, right? For a week, okay. yes, one inch each week. And if you do it one inch all at once, the water soaks down into the ground and the roots of the grass grow deeper. If you do it three times a week, just a little bit, 
the roots always stay up near the surface and they're more vulnerable to dry conditions. And to weeds and things? And to weeds as well, yes. So you're really producing healthier grass by watering it this way? Absolutely. Oh, that's interesting because I get a lot of weeds in my, in my yard. Um, so that's all you need to do is just get this little tuna can and make your rain gauge. And this would be a fun project for the kids too in the that's summer. Maybe even make one of your kids the monitor of the water checking once a week. That could That's be right. their job and to help them and realize a little bit about nature too. And then you also have to learn how to manage your irrigation system. Okay, so, so what do you do with that? Most times the irrigation systems are programmed to water three times a week. But so we you really can program that. them yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you don't still have the manual that came with your system. Which you should have filed someplace right near the system. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can also try to Google the company on the internet. Thank goodness for Google. Hmm? And search around that website to see about how to program your system so that it waters once a week for one inch and also how to operate it manually. So if the well, rain has point. provided yeah. one inch a week, then you don't need to water. It right. saves Isn't you because you- ridiculous when you go out and see those systems on and it had just been raining or sometimes they're even on when it's raining. That's what a right. waste. What a waste. And not only what a waste of water, but what a waste of money because we all and pay for water. And running the systems. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. So we want to be more green, and these are great, great ideas that you're giving us. Um, so we also talk a little bit about the municipalities that make the decisions the, for the water suppliers and so forth. And uh, you hear about contamination, about water, and so on. And um, you said there was a program that purchased land around the reservoir since the 1990s? Yes, the one cent per 100 gallon surcharge that we all pay on our water bills goes back to the suppliers to purchase land so that there won't be houses or businesses that would contaminate the water system. That's a great idea. And, and, and apparently around the Situate Reservoir, there's quite a lot of forest. Yes. When the Situate Reservoir land was condemned back in the 20s, all of those farms, and there were certainly families who were devastated by the mm -hmm. loss of that, that land. And there were five Towns. new villages underneath yeah. what is now the Situate Reservoir. But there's a large forest area around there. There's no access permitted for picnicking or fishing. And that's to protect the water supply so that it won't become contaminated by uh, septic systems or human use. There are roads that go across the Situate Reservoir, uh, yeah, and I've there's often low about salt. That. Uh, in the past, there has been low salt use. Uh, there's some question now about the policy that the Water Supply Board is using. Uh, the Board of Health believes that it's a safe practice to salt the roads because the reservoir is so big and the concentration of salt is so small. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they test that from time yes, to time. Yes, they do. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about contamination a little bit without getting too much into that, but uh, you read and you hear about pharmaceuticals in the water, Virginia. Right. They're, here in Rhode Island, we're very fortunate because the sources of our water are pure and we're not taking water from a river that someone has dumped sewage into upstream. Mm -hmm. And so it's the sewage that's con that contains the pharmaceuticals that are being picked up in some water systems. Uh, I don't know if we had an extensive testing of places where there are septic systems and wells, uh, what we would be finding, but recently, the Situate system, which serves 60% of the residents of the state, has been tested, and there are no pharmaceuticals detected in the Situate system. Good. But one of the things that does contaminate water, uh, 
the water for wildlife is pet waste. And one of the things I talk about is when you walk your dog, directing the dog not to the curb, as we've always been told, curb your dog, but you should direct the dog to the grass so that the pet waste has it. First of all, you should pick up yeah, what you pick can. Pick up your poop. Pick up the poop. But right. <laughs> the pee goes into the ground, and it's the pee that has the greatest nitrogen, which is mm. the concern for water. So make it go on the grass and not in the street where it will run and down the gutter and into the nearby yeah, stream. Yeah, that's a good point. And we certainly have more pets these days. Yes. Everybody we, wants a pet, and uh, so it's important that you're responsible with your pets. That's a very good point. Um, <clears throat> so uh, what's this wellhead? Put oh protection zone about the wells and so right, on. Right, because and some that water systems Down get their Canada, water yeah. from groundwater and pump it out of the ground with a well, whereas other systems get from a reservoir, which is a dammed stream. Mm -hmm. Now, in Pasco, in northern Rhode Island, I guess there, were, there was some contamination of, uh, from a gas station. Right. One of the additives to make gasoline work better in our cars, contaminated the water system there, and caused people great inconvenience and caused people to be without water mm. uh, for many months. So we have to be careful about pouring things into the ground or spilling things. Um, I used to think that Mother Nature would take care of everything. That's mm. what people said, but that's not true because water moves through the little particles of sand and it carries with it uh, contamination that can reach a supply. And that was a fracture in the bedrock in Pasco? Right. Most of our water, as I talked about before, comes from these sand and gravel aquifers. But it's possible that you can get water from bedrock where there are cracks or fissures in the, in the bedrock. Well, Eugenia, this has been very informative, and I think we know some things to do this summer to conserve our water with our lawns and uh, to avoid contaminating our water supplies. And thank you so much for coming on Tea with Maria. Yeah. This half hour is over already. That's surprising. But I think you've really shared a lot of good information. I've been very concerned about water, and I'm so glad you came and visited with us. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you also for joining us on Tea with Marie. And um, I'm Marie Yunkin Waldman saying goodbye for now. And don't forget to keep beauty in your lives, whether it's any kind of beauty or the beauty of conserving our water supply, because if we ever run out of water, there won't be any more on the planet. So we really need to be aware that it is not an endless resource and take care of it. Thank you.